Hello guys, this is Orphan Last, and today I'm going to go ahead and offer you guys a tutorial on the FX Schematic and the Stage Editor, uh, I believe. Yeah, Function Editor and the FX Schematic. Okay, let me go ahead and dissect this animation real quick for you. This is some of the stuff that I covered inside of my prerequisites to these two different tools. Okay, so let me go ahead and turn off these specific uh, columns, and you can see in this animation there are appendages that disappear and it kind of looks weird a little bit, but that's fine because they reappear inside of different columns. And in, in, in my punching man, this guy right here, there are times I just copied and pasted. In this case, with this specific guy, the red guy, I decided that uh, I would completely cut out uh, appendages way more than I did with the other one. And if I look at this guy, he looks way better than this guy. There's been a learning curve going on. And so... Um, my, I feel like things are looking a lot better as time has developed. So now this right here with this column, it's the wisp in the back of his head, and it's this wisp in the front of his head. And that's what all three of these columns are. And you can't just add one effect for all three of these columns. Like his arm right here, which is uh, this arm that flails down, um, this arm is going to have a completely different trajectory and different blur effect for its trajectory than this arm. And uh, his head is going to have a completely different trajectory. And they're all sharing uh, the same columns. And uh, if I just applied it all on this column, then everything becomes blurry. And so that's the reason why I've decided to do it this way. Uh, I, I originally tried to do this technique with a bunch of mats, and it looked nice until something happened and it just decided to glitch out. So let's look at the effects uh, schematic real quick here, and uh, let's get this going on. And for some reason I screwed everything up, I'll set it up again. Okay, so with the effects schematic... Um, basically, the way it works is you, you can... You click on it, and then you go ahead and zoom in, zoom out with the scroll wheel, and you use the directional keys on your computer to move around. When you zoom in, you can actually see a little bit better of what's going on. Uh, this is HBL, so that's HBL right there. This is HBR, this is HBR right here. Uh, HBO, HBO right there. And here's my Hitman right here, and that's the Hitman column. So as you can see, it's named the same thing that you name it right up here. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and start with the HB, uh, HBL uh, column. Okay. So I'm going to right click. And the reason why I'm going to right click is because if I just go add effects right here, it'll add the, the, the node uh, anywhere the computer decides to put it. So I put a right click here and I go... Let's see, we're going for blur, and we're going to go directional blur Iowa. And because I right-clicked exactly right on this plugin node, uh, it went right into the source and then right into the X sheet. I'm going to do the same thing right here, and insert effects, blur, uh, directional Iowa, if it'll do it. Okay, cool. All right, uh, so I'm going to continue this process. Uh, insert effects, blur, directional blur Iowa. Okay, so I now have a, a, a special effect applied to all three of these layers right here, uh, or columns right here, all right? Now, uh, let's go into the, uh, well, you know, uh, let's just stay here for now, okay? So we got directional blur Iowa number eight. Let's go ahead and click on that, and you can see angle and intensity just appeared right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on that. Um, well, shoot, one second here. Let's go into, okay, we're working on number eight, so let's go into the X sheet room, and this is a heck of a lot better to work with, in my opinion. So let's, uh, let's find the first frame where this actually happens, and I have the preview mode activated and we'll see what's going on. Okay, so we are on frame number 18, frame number 18, and we can go ahead and double click here, and let's just go uh, 220 degrees, because it's on angle, and then let's say 30, just because I want to be able to see the effect really well. 
and it's processing the information and you know it's not really showing it very well so let's go ahead and ramp it up to 50 okay this is taking some time for it to process so I'm just gonna go ahead and deactivate all the other crap that is needing to be rendered unnecessarily that doesn't need to be rendered just for the sake of time and and everything like that just so that it's it's not so intensive on on the computer so we can see that this is really intense now um, but uh, it's still having to render it because I got rid of all that stuff actually you know what I bet you if I did this at uh, 180 degrees the effect would look just right actually that looks just right so I'm going to lower this down to uh, 15 intensity and that worked all right cool it worked so we're on number 18 19 okay that doesn't change 20 okay 20 it does a little bit let's go ahead and change it to uh, let's say 200 sounds good and see how it filled in in, in between so 180 180 87 uh, 200 and uh, so we can see the effect is slowly changing between these three frames it's just ever so slight with this left arm here stage left arm and let's keep the intensity at 15 and so it fills in in between there and I can see that there's one more frame right below and we can see okay yep right there and I want this to be um, almost like uh, that like that angle so let's say 220 220 seems like the magic number for some reason <clears throat> yeah that looks about right only that uh, I actually want to drop this down to 10 all right so that looks a heck of a lot better so now that we're done with this we need to address the other one so animation okay anima okay uh, Iowa 9 so we need to go into X sheet Iowa 9 go down okay Iowa 9 okay so this is applying to the right arm here so we can see where we are right there and let's see we need to figure out a specific angle so let's go 130 and go uh, I don't know let's let, let's go 30 on the intensity and we'll see how that looks when it renders okay so now I'm going to turn the preview mode on and off again and I actually like that quite a bit <clears throat> actually I'm going to change it down to 2120 uh, and we'll see how that looks after it renders okay so it's uh, I changed it to 125 and uh, I'm actually liking that quite a bit that looks just about right and uh, so let's see next frame okay so let's uh, let's get this at 90 degrees 90 degrees and uh, let's go ahead and turn on the preview mode keep it at 30 actually I'm going to change this to uh, let's say 15 sounds good and let's let that render and uh, you know what let's put this at 15 as well uh, with the intensity so we scrub through it and we can see that it uh, it's starting to look pretty good actually that right there I want the intent like I don't want the all that to be visible so I'm going to ramp this up to 20 okay so we go ahead and scrub through the animation and it's actually looking pretty stinking good uh, except for right here let's see here so whenever you see things in yellow in the function editor that means that it's kind of like a keyframe in the in the function editor itself and whenever it's in gray it's trying to do in betweening or tweening in the, in the whole process here now with this right arm being behind the hitman I'm just gonna go ahead and move it literally behind him and uh, it'll have to re-render things but uh, it'll make the blur not overlap over his face thank you for joining me in this tutorial